And oh, apparently in that case that's a breakpoint. Alright, in this tutorial we're going to be making a radar, which is relatively simple. It's only it's honestly as long as you know how to actually make a for loop, <laughs> you can pretty much do this. It's about right there with bunny hop, I would say. Pretty much the two enemies right in front of me. As you can see at the top left of my radar, they are not showing up. So I don't, if I didn't see them, I technically wouldn't know where they are. So, but if you look at them, like scan your crosshair over them, you see they appear red and your radar at the top left. So even if it was here and they showed up there, I would at least have some sort of incentive of where they are just by the radar. So we can go ahead and get started with writing it. I'm just going to run back to spawn. I'm going to run back over there. I don't know why I restarted, but... Could just by the time we were done, yeah. Move anyways, it, it. I just parked myself right behind this rock. I can kind of see him. All right, so they are visible, not showing up on radar. Now, pretty much, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting the entity which goes off the game module slash client underscore panorama dot dll we read the entity list off well, we add the entity list offset we add the id to the entity that we want so we're going to be using the for loop pretty much to control that then just use our little multiplier now to set them spotted so they show up on the radar all we do is the entity we just got then we add the is spotted offset which i didn't Oh, well, I already had it up in the thing. Ah. Alright, so here's our guess. It ugh, is spotted offset. So, let's go ahead and include our library, Windows.h. We're going to include iostream. Actually, there's no reason to really print anything off in this case. We're going to include our memory class, which over here is memman, which will be included in the description. And then we're going to go ahead and make what we want to access it, which we, the access class, which, and all the other tutorials I just used, literally, I just put mem class. So now we want a structure for our offsets. So struct offsets. Now we, how we want to access it, we're just going to use the word offset. Now we want one for our variables. So struct variables. And same thing with the rest of the tutorials. I use val. Alright. So first thing we need to do is pretty much get the process ID of CSGO. So we can do that simply by storing an integer. So int proc ID equals mem class dot get process. As you can see, it takes in what the name of the game is going to be, or the executable. So CSGO dot exe. Now we want to get the game module slash client underscore panorama. So I'm going to store it up here. D word game module since we're just storing an address. So val dot game module equals mem class dot get module. Now it takes in the process ID, so proc ID. Then the name of the module we want. So in our case it is client underscore panorama dot dll. So we have what we need. Let's go ahead and add these three offsets to our structure. Glow index. Alright, remove glow index. I don't know why that's just even there. Oh, previous tutorial. Blah, 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 blah. Yep. Alright, 
right, so now we can go ahead and make our act our main loop. So while true, so it's always running. And as always with external, sleep for one millisecond. Now here's where we're going to be looping through the entity list. So we're going to need our for loop. So for short int i, set it to zero. While i is less than 64, we're going to run the loop. And we're going to increment i by one every time it runs. So now this is where we do what we wrote down. We need to get the entity, which is the game module, plus the entity list offset, plus the entity ID, which is I, then multiply it. So the word entity equals mem class dot read mem. It's a type, it's an address, so D word. Now it takes in the address, which is val dot game module plus offset dot entity list plus i, which is the entity we're going for, times 0x10. So now from here, we can just make sure it doesn't equal null. So if entity does not equal null, we're going to set it so we can actually read it. Although if, if I do recall correctly, uh, if you do try to show your teammates with this, I want to say the game crashes, I think. So that'll be just an experiment real quick. So we'll try it real quick and see. So to set them spotted, we go off the entity and then we add the uh, spotted offset to it. So it's going to be a boolean, so we're just going to set it to true. So mem class dot write mem boolean. Now the address and then the value we want to set to it. So entity plus offset dot is spotted. Now we want to set that to true. So now we can see if it crashes our game. Control F5. It actually didn't crash it, but as you can see over there, when I ran the program, well, I'll just go ahead and damn it, restart game one, just for reference. Well, they're still going to be showing, but you can still see they're showing in the radar. I'm just going to hide in, I guess, upstairs. Oh, it's a damn ledge. So, we know our enemies are over there. And nothing is showing up on our radar. We're going to go ahead and run our program. And as you can see, they are now visible on the radar. So we can unfreeze the bots. As you can see, it just tracks them just like so. So we can see, oh look, the bomb carrier is right here. He's coming towards the basement. He's in the basement. Other guy's over here. And he's on the bomb site. So that's how that works. Oh, that beeping's going to get annoying. Oops. So a quick rundown on what we did here. First off, we get our offsets, store them in the structure just for easy access. And I always just store them off the game module and a struct where I have all my functions just to make it easy for access. Same thing with local player. We get access, well, we get the process ID from CSGO. We get access to this module here. Now what we do is we always have our main loop. So we always just have 
literally all our crap generally running inside it that we want to happen. So now what we need to do is we loop through the entity list. So we create a for loop. We use i as our control variable. We set it to zero, and it's going. This loop's going to keep iterating until i is greater than 64, or equal to or greater than 64. Once that happens, it's going to jump back here. It's going to run through. It's going to sleep for a millisecond and start right back at the top of our main loop. And it's going to run this for loop again with i starting at zero. So it's literally just keep doing iteration after iteration after iteration. So then inside the for loop, we get access to pretty much the entity that we want. So first entity, second entity, third entity, all being generally pretty much 1 through 64, or 0 through 64, is a bot slash player. So as well as if they don't, if it's, ugh, if it does not equal null, pretty much 0, we are going to write to it. So if it doesn't equal to 0, and it's also going to be less than 64. That means it's going to be a bot or a player. So that means it's safe for us to write to it. So we're going to pretty much set the is spotted variable that is stored in the entity to true. So that way they're just going to show up on our radar for our client. So wherever they're at, as long as they're within, like if you know how Glow and ESP works, if they're dormant and visible, like where they can, they're technically known on our client, it works the exact same way. If they're known, they're going to be shown on the radar. So it's literally as simple as that.